Hello friends, it's Jim O'Rear. Welcome back to Jim O'Rear's Wacky World. It is the 60th anniversary of 2000 Maniacs, the cult classic splatter film. And we are here in St. Cloud, Florida, where the movie was filmed, to visit some of those iconic locations and show you what they look like today. Now, if you are not familiar with 2000 Maniacs, it was a grindhouse exploitation film, one of the early video nasties. It's considered a, a cult classic. And the basic plot of it is that there's this small little town in Georgia, and they lure Yankees to the town for their centennial celebration. And it doesn't take the Yankees long to learn that, uh, you know, this town was destroyed 200 years ago in the Civil War, and now all the locals are having a celebration to kill Yankees for revenge. The story of the film was actually inspired by the 1947 Lerner and Lowe musical Brigadoon, and it was written and directed by Herschel Gordon Lewis, who is uh, a guy that holds the title of Godfather of Gore. He is also attributed as to creating the very first splatter film with his movie Blood Feast. And 2000 Maniacs was his second splatter film that he made. And uh, it was shot over the course of 15 days in St. Cloud, Florida. And according to reports, the entire town participated in the film. And it looks like they had a great time. It is silly, silly, gory fun. And it was, like I said, one of the original splatter films that was released. So come take a look with us at some of these iconic locations from 2000 Maniacs. We are here on New York Avenue in St. Cloud, Florida, outside the Hunter Arms Hotel. And this is the hotel where a ton of the movie was shot. They did all sorts of exteriors and interiors here at this hotel. Uh, it's a very iconic location in the movie. So we're going to take a closer look at the hotel. So right at the top of the movie, this is where the car pulls up when the first group of Yankees arrive at the town square. And they stop right here in the intersection in front of the hotel. So the car sits right there for quite a while. And you can see behind them when uh, when the mayor's talking these arches right here of the hotel you can see uh, so the those arches sometimes the uh, the sign of the hotel is visible as well behind them get out of here you little creep you all clear out of here billy here yeah. <laughs> i'm a buckman man this your town and right up here is where the centennial celebration would have hung that that banner uh from the top of the hotel and uh, going right across the intersection right there to welcome the visitors. So there is a scene also where there's a couple guys talking in the intersection here. And I think it's kind of shot sort of like this angle right here in the movie. Uh, but this is that exact road crossing right here. All right, so going into the hotel, this should look very familiar to fans of the movie. This shot right here was where there were a couple of rednecks sitting, having a little conversation. Papa boy, I got a feeling that you're going to have more fun than a, a beagle dog on a coon hunt. <laughs> yeah, so you see it's got uh, right there where they were seated, camera panned over to show the rest of the lobby. And then there was this other little doorway right here where a, a guy was seated. And if we look at the side by side right here, you can see how it's n not a whole lot different. It looks very, very, very similar to the movie. Now, uh, the guy that was sitting there by the door, he gets up and he goes over to talk to uh, the switchboard operator. And this little area right here where the switchboard operator is, is now actually a small little bar. And you'll notice that she's kind of sitting next to where the, uh, the bar is now. Uh, they've just kind of stuck her in the corner. And, and this is it right here. This is that, that bar that she's sitting next to. And uh, she's just kind of wedged right in here. Um, now, if we take a look at that side by side from the movie, You'll see that, yeah, she's sitting right there, right there next to, to that bar top. All right, so 
something very, very iconic right here, the fireplace. <laughs> the fireplace is, it, it, it's, it, it's just like it was in the movie. You walk in there and you go, man, that's where a sign of carnage happened right there in front of that fireplace. There was a woman that was chopped up with an axe. A guy grabs an axe right there and throws this woman up on a table that is right here where the couch is now and they kill her and dismember her So, looking at a little side by side here, you'll see, you know, the couch is where the table is. There's a fireplace behind them. Right here is where they grab the axe and go back to the table to chop her up. So, it's just like stepping into the movie. And you'll notice that it's used in other scenes here with the mayor as the mayor's office. Now, let's head upstairs so that we can see where some of the hallway scenes were shot. And, uh, and some of the rooms. When you get up here to the top of the stairs and you kind of spin around, you'll notice there's a little seating area now right here with, uh, with some coffee. And this narrow little hallway that looks very familiar, just like in the movie when you're looking down that hallway. I mean, it's, it's unmistakable that it's the same hallway. And it's tiny, it's a tiny narrow little hallway but you'll notice that there's a couple characters inside their room being guarded by a redneck. Now, they do eventually escape this room, and here is my reenactment of escape. Look, look, I'm escaping. Yeah, they do it better in the movie. Uh, but they come right out of that room and head out this door. Now, uh, let's take a look at the door. So you may remember in the movie that a couple of the characters came out of that door right up there trying to sneak out of the hotel, came running down the stairs and, and uh, off this way. And notice that it really looks almost exactly the same as it did in the movie. And uh, I mean, it's instantly recognizable, but it's really kind of hidden back here in this little back alley behind the hotel. All right, so we'll zoom in a little bit closer here, um, kind of like they had in the movie. Um, and you'll notice that uh, you know, right here, they just came out of this door and came down the walkway, uh, right on down through here. And let's go back up for that side by side and see it again here where they come out of the door right here. And they travel on down these steps to make their getaway. So that's kind of what it, it uh, is looking like today. It's uh, like I said, the uh, you know, the stairs are a little a little dirtier, more rusty, the door's a different color, but this is a very recognizable stairway from the movie. And like I said, it's instantly recognizable. I rounded this corner and saw the stairs and went, oh my gosh, there's, there's the stairs from the movie. All right, so you may remember that there was a scene in the movie where they're panning across the, the windows as people are talking out their windows. And uh, even that hunter's arm uh, sign right there gets into one of the shots a little bit so uh, that's how I know that these are the specific windows that they were, were filming in that scene and uh, you know they were very tight on the windows when they came across and, and kind of shot like this as the uh, people were hanging out the windows and talking to each other and gets that little bit of hunter right there in as they're going across to the other windows there's a lot taller trees now than there were before and looks like they put some some shutters on the windows but uh but that's them right there where they're hanging out the window and and talking to each other so a quick peek inside those rooms you know those weird phones that they used to talk to the switchboard on yeah well now they're just like covered up and painted over that's what they look like now inside the rooms. Uh, so one more thing here in the hotel before we go to our next location. I thought this was really cool that there's a wall in there and, you know, where they normally have like newspaper articles and things like that about, you know, the hotel being completed and, and you know, uh, uh, magazine articles about the hotel and stuff. Well, also there, they have lobby cards and photos from the movie hanging on the wall. And... I just thought that was really cool because it is an exploitation grindhouse film, a video nasty, 
that this hotel has embraced, this business has embraced this horror movie where other businesses might have just went, yeah, we kind of want to divorce ourselves from that violence and gore. They have not. And I love that about this hotel, that they embrace the film. Now, let's head outside to our next location. All right, so we're going to walk down here, and you'll remember the opening of the movie where all the people are coming out for the celebration, and they're playing banjos in the streets and walking down the sidewalks and, you know, just having a good old time. This is it right here. This has changed a little bit. Um, I mean, kind of significantly as far as, you know, the the roof goes and, and things like that, but it's still very noticeable that this is that exact sidewalk where they were preparing for the celebration. All right, so here we are in Veterans Park in St. Cloud, Florida, just a block down the street from the hotel. And you may recognize this building behind me as well as the field and some trees. This is where an iconic torture scene took place. Now, over here, there are some helicopters and things like that sitting in the field, which were not in the movie, probably weren't here 60 years ago. Uh, but this particular building looks exactly the same, which you can see in the background of the scenes. And the scene I'm talking about is where they have a giant boulder uh, suspended and they have one of the victims laying on the ground and the boulder drops and crushes the victim. That was right here in this field. So we're going to take a little closer look at the grounds here where that scene was shot. All right, looking a little bit closer, this is about all you see of the building in the movie, you see about one door and the wall. Um, you don't see a whole lot more than that. And a lot of times it's cropped in very close, focusing on the action that's taking place in the field. Now, right here in between these trees is where that scene with the boulder was set up. And, uh, you know, I'm assuming the, the tower was somewhere right around here. Uh, according to the tree placement and, uh, and the, the building. So this is what it looks like in the movie. You'll notice there are pathways that are no longer there. Now it's just all grass in the field. But there's the giant boulder that sits up there, and they had the, uh, the little platform that they lay the victim on underneath the rock. And then uh, people get to throw things at a target, like a dunking booth, to try and drop that boulder on top of her. And there's that building you can see right back there behind them that uh, is very recognizable in this park. In this building, you would not know it by looking at it from this side, but uh, it's actually, it's a band shell. And there you go. When we come around to the front of the building, you see that it is a giant band shell that was set up for their high school band in 1952. And the movie was shot in 1964, so it had already been here quite a while when the movie was shot. But uh, that's... That's what you're looking at when you look at the front of the building. And this is the side right here that you actually see in the movie. Um, doesn't show that it's a band shell at all when you're shooting it from over here. So the trees are quite a bit bigger and quite a bit fuller with leaves than when the movie was shot. Because, uh, well, you know, 60 years have passed. But, uh, I mean, it's still very, very instantly recognizable. Now we're headed down busy Erlo Bronson Parkway to the one location that actually looks vastly different than it did in the movie. This is Lister's Garage or uh, Lester's Garage, uh, w which is where they, uh, they hid the car in the movie. And uh, you would not recognize it today. Here you go. This is it. This is what's left of it. That big building with the sliding tin door on it where the, the car was hidden. Um, this is it. There's a small bit of the structure that is recognizable, but not a lot. This is what it looks like in the movie compared to now. Uh, you know, this highway here, Erlo Bronson, was not as built up back then uh, and huge as it is now. Uh, so there was a lot more area to work with here as well as a much quieter environment where they could film. Uh, now it's super noisy and you would never know that that little building right there is the garage from 2000 Maniacs, but that's what it looks like now. Um, just kind of a little 
little storage shack, really. 2000 Maniacs was heavily cut by the MPAA when it was released, which meant that it only screened in a few theaters, primarily drive-ins, where it did extremely well in southern states. Are we surprised? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but it's still considered a major cult splatter classic today. So I hope you've enjoyed looking back at some of the scenes then and now for 2000 Maniacs on this 60th anniversary of the movie. If you have, click that like button to let the powers that be know that you like the video. And while you're at it, click on follow or subscribe, and you'll be notified when I upload new videos. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.